Now question 4a, we're being asked to talk about the uh, oxygen, magnesium and sulphur atoms as well as their ions and asked to relate it to in terms of their structure which obviously we're talking about the number of protons, the energy level they're in, electron shielding, things like that. So the first thing is to identify whereabouts they are in the periodic table. Now magnesium is in the same uh, row as sulphur so as we go across the only thing they're really changing here is more protons being added. Same electron shielding, same energy level. So if we add more protons, we expect an increase in electrostatic attraction. And that means the electrons will be held more tightly. And we'd expect the radius to get smaller, which it does. Now if we make a comparison with oxygen here, that's in the same group um, as sulfur. And it's a whole energy level closer in. There's going to be less electron shielding. So we'd expect um, the uh, radius for this to be even smaller still. So if we were to make a comparison, oxygen would be the smallest, then sulfur, then magnesium. Now we've just got to make sure we do have complete answers. So um, we need to look at the ions, compare um, the ions with themselves, so for instance oxygen compared to O2 minus, sulfur compared to sulfur 2 minus or sulfide, and magnesium compared to Mg2 plus. Now when you go to O2 minus obviously we need to state that the number of protons doesn't change, the only thing that changes is we're getting extra electrons, so there'll be extra electron-electron repulsion in this case, and that means the electrostatic attraction will be um, weaker and therefore the radius will be greater. And the same really holds true for sulfur as well. Um, same explanation, except obviously it's in an energy level that's even further out. Magnesium to magnesium 2 plus, the big deal we need to mention about this one is yes it's the same number of protons but when we lose those electrons we've now an energy level closer in, there's a less electron shielding and the electrostatic attraction is greater so we'd expect this radius to be um, smaller. So we can you know, rank those in there and now we can compare um, all the ions with each other so just looking at all those three and seeing how they compare. Now I've just redrawn this and so we're trying to make a comparison between these three and I've kind of redrawn the periodic table a bit to show where they kind of sit now. The sulfur is still in this or well, the sulfide ion really is still in this row and uh, the oxide ion is still in this row as well. Now the magnesium which was um, over here as Mg in the same row as sulfur because it's lost those two electrons it's now gone down so that just helps you get into your mind where it's at to make this comparison. Now obviously we'd expect the one that has the largest radius to be sulfide so that's going to be the biggest because it's physically further away the distance is greater there's more electron electron repulsion and the electrostatic attraction will be weaker therefore it's going to have the bigger radius now we're just making a comparison between oxide and magnesium 2 plus now they both have the same number of electrons and that's called being isoelectronic and you should use those terms if you know them and um, also what else is different between them? The number of protons. Now magnesium has more protons than oxygen so we'd expect a greater electrostatic attraction between magnesium and the valence electrons than for oxide. So magnesium would actually have the smaller radius so we'd have it as being Mg2 plus being the smallest then the oxide and then the sulphide being the largest and we just need to make sure we fully discuss that when we do it.